हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल डिजिटल लर्निंग आई एम रजिता एंड आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू द बीएड नोट्स ऑफ सेमेस्टर टू पेपर एट ए दैट इज नॉलेज एंड करिकुलम आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन यू द नोट्स ऑफ सेमेस्टर वन सेमेस्टर फोर सेमेस्टर वन एंड फोर वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड सेमेस्टर टू हैव गिवन हाफ मीन्स द नोट्स ऑफ फर्स्ट पेपर दैट इज पेपर थ्री लर्निंग एंड टीचिंग इजेंट इट आई ऑलरेडी गिवन इज देयर इट माई यूट्यूब चैनल यू कैन चेक इट and today we are going to start with the knowledge and curriculum so without wasting any time let us start course 8a knowledge and curriculum unit 1 that is understanding the nature of knowledge it is knowledge k n o w understanding the nature of knowledge first comes comes to the concept and definition okay theory of knowledge has been constructed as a branch of philosophy known as epistemology epistemology comes from the greek word episteme meaning knowledge and logos meaning discourse of science it is an area of philosophy concerned with the nature and justification of human knowledge it is that field of philosophical inquiry which investigates the origin nature of knowledge methods validity and limits of knowledge epistemologists historically have concerned themselves with such questions as what is knowledge is knowledge one or many what is the structure of knowledge and what are its logical categories whether knowledge is innate or learned whether knowledge is a mental state and so on ye sare questions they used to ask from themselves only they have these questions as such epistemology deals with two fundamental problems of knowledge that is origin of knowledge and validation of knowledge the discussion on origin of knowledge focuses on the relative roles of knower and the known in the making of knowledge process of coming to know begins with the knowers that is the subject engagement with to be known that is the object the knows engagement and relationship begins with his or her contact with to be known known matlab ho gaya hamara object jis pe object ke sath na jaane ja rahe hain the contact takes place through senses in a context physical biological or socio cultural and others now the definition of knowledge Plato defined knowledge as true opinion combined with reason. In his dialogues named Treatises, Plato referred to three explanation of knowledge. Knowledge is a perception or truth. Knowledge is true belief. Knowledge is a true belief with a rational account. Knowledge is a true belief with a rational account. After through examination Plato defined knowledge as justified means true belief. True. John Locke refers to knowledge as the perception of agreement or disagreement of two ideas. Davy, who was a pragmatist, viewed knowledge as that which can be inferred from evidence. According to Webster's dictionary knowledge is the fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience or association The National Curriculum Framework 2005 states that knowledge can be conceived as experience organized through language into patterns of thoughts or structures of concept thus creating meaning which in turn helps us to understand the world we live in it can also be conceived of as patterns of activity or physical dexterity with thought contributing to acting in the world and the creating and making of things human beings over time have evolved many bodies of knowledge which include a repertoire of ways of thinking of feeling and of doing things and constructing more knowledge 
The above extract from NCF 2005 implies that it is important for children to participate in the process of knowledge creation. It is not only the product but also the process involved in knowledge generation that needs our attention. Knowledge is not a finished product that the teacher transfers to the mind of the child. In such a case, the learner is just a passive recipient. It is more important for the learner to be dynamically engaged with the learning situation and thus create knowledge. Okay. So this was the definition of knowledge. Now comes to the characteristics of knowledge. Knowledge is characterized by some special features. First is three aspects of knowledge. Knowledge has three main aspects. The knowledge seeker means the consecutionist of the participant, the known, the field of study, and the process of knowing which connects the knower and the known. An effective blend of all three aspects leads to knowledge. Next is social character of knowledge. Knowledge is a shared product. Interaction of people in the society generates knowledge. It cannot be attributed to a single individual. Rather, develops due to the contribution of di different people in the society. Even if certain knowledge comes from one person, this person's previous knowledge is a product of his or her experience with society. Knowledge cannot be generated in vacuum. It is created, sustained and nourished by society. Example, Karl Marx had contributed to economics through his theory of surplus value. Though this theory may be the contribution of Marx, yet it must be acknowledged, acknowledged that Marx proposed the theory due to what he observed and experienced in society. His previous understanding of wealth generation, production and the conditions of the working class resulted in this theory. Next, our third point is cumulative and non-depleting character of knowledge. Knowledge grows by building on what already exists and hence is cumulative in nature. The knowledge of relati uh, reality is ever-expanding discoveries of new facts, changing perceptions and a change in the way we view and understand something leads to expansion of knowledge. Human understanding of the world around us is always in a state of change. For example, in the past it was believed that the sun moves around the earth. As science developed this knowledge, changed and we accepted that the sun is the center of the solar system. Old knowledge gets enhanced and in some cases it gets replaced knowledge can never be stagnant. This leads to knowledge expansion and in the past few decades we are experiencing knowledge explosion. Next point is knowledge develops perspectives. Knowledge is not just explanatory. It is also interpretative in nature. Depending upon the kind of exposure the knowledge seeker has, knowledge tends to construct reality for the knowledge seeker. Knowledge is interpreted in the social context and hence it is said to be perspective generating. For example, if a student gains knowledge about Mahatma Gandhi and his work, he is not just gathering facts about Gandhi's work, he is also forming some perspectives based on the knowledge. Knowledge is transferable. Knowledge can move from one place to another. Explicit knowledge in the form of documents, books, etc. In particular can easily be distributed via networks to many people. We expect uh, sorry, we accept that knowledge is transferred from teacher to student, from one generation to another or to, from one generation to another or from author to reader. Or I can say that I am making the notes and I am just giving it to you by social media. So, this is the distribution of knowledge. Okay, so knowledge is transferable. 
Next point is knowledge can be categorized. According to NCF 2005, knowledge can be categorized based on distinct kinds of concepts and meanings involved and processes of validation and justification. Thus, we have social science, mathematics, natural science, business studies, humanities and arts as different areas of knowledge. हर जगह हम लोग को different different knowledge मिलता है ना क्या जो S S T में मिलता है वही math में मिलता है और वही science में भी मिलता है no each involves its own kind of critical thinking its own way of verifying and authenticating knowledge and its own kind of creativity. Each category provides a lens to view the world, understand the world and engage and act in the world. For example, our knowledge of mathematics helps us to appreciate the ethistics in architecture. It helps to understand money transaction and it helps us to carry out basic calculations. This is because mathematics as a category of knowledge has its own concepts and meanings. Next is type of knowledge that is personal, propositional and procedure knowledge. Three divisions of knowledge based on the way or manner in which it is obtained. Knowledge can be classified under three heads. First is a prior knowledge. A prior knowledge is a knowledge whose truth or falsity can be decided before or without recourse to experience. A prior means before. So knowledge that's a prior has universal validity and once recognized as true through the use of pure reason does not require any further evidence. Logical and mathematical truths are a prior in nature. They do not stand in need of empirical validations. Traditional philosophers have regarded a prior. Knowledge as superior to all the other knowledge. The propositions that come under this category of knowledge are known as analytical propositions. An analytic proposition is one whose truth can be determined solely by an analysis of the meaning of the words in the sentences expressing it and whose truth or falsity can be decided by a pure reason without recourse to verification with experience. For example, the propositions bachelors are unmarried men or 2 plus 2 equals 4. Just keep going verification experiences. कि ये दोबारा करने की जरूरत नहीं है ये होता ही क्या है ठीक है सेकंड इज अ पोस्टीरियर नॉलेज अ पोस्टीरियर नॉलेज इज द नॉलेज बेस्ड अपॉन ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड एक्सपीरियंस दिस इज द नॉलेज ऑफ द साइंटिफिक मेथड स्ट्रेसिंग एक्यूरेट ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड एग्जैक्ट डिस्क्रिप्शन द प्रोपोजिशन दैट फॉल अंडर दिस कैटेगरी कैन बी लुक्ड एट फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ वेदर दे कंटेन एनी फैक्चुअल कंटेंट एंड फ्रॉम द स्टैंड पॉइंट ऑफ द क्राइटेरिया एम्प्लॉयड फॉर डिसाइडिंग देयर ट्रुथ और फॉल्सिटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी हैव प्रोपोजिशन लाइक आइस मेल्ट स्नो इज वाइट मेटल्स कंडक्ट हीट एंड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दीज प्रोपोजिशन गिव अस Factual information whose truth or falsity can be decided only through observation and verification. These are called as synthetic propositions. It can be clearly demonstrated that mathematical knowledge is of the analytic or prior type and scientific knowledge is of, scientific, is of synthetic or posterior type. Okay, so now comes to the third point that is experienced knowledge experienced knowledge is always tentative and cannot exist prior to experience or be concluded from observation value must be experienced to have basic to the three types is propositional knowledge a prior and a posterior and it is to this type that the structure of knowledge question is addressed this has important implications to curriculum planning. 
Philosophers divided knowledge into three types which are explained below. First is the personal knowledge. Personal knowledge refers to the knowledge by acquaintance. For example, a person understands the term fear or we can say that he has the knowledge of the term fear because she or he has experienced fear. If someone says, I know Anisha, it means that the person making the claim has met Anisha or had some experience or contact with Anisha. Personal knowledge will involve having some kind of propositional knowledge as well. Hicks and Tuchin define personal knowledge as the result of the individual's personal experience and reflections of these experiences. Next is the procedural knowledge. Procedural knowledge, also called imperative knowledge, is the knowledge required to perform a task. For example, in order to drive a car, we need to have a procedural knowledge in order to actually perform the task. A person may explain the accurate procedure of driving a car, but if he or she cannot actually drive one, he or she lacks procedural knowledge. Procedure nahi aata. The person has proportional knowledge, but no procedural knowledge. Okay? If one has carefully watched a chef make romali rotis, one may be able to tell the exact ingredients and the right procedure. This is propositional knowledge. But if the person is unable to make the Rumali roti, then she has no procedural knowledge. In real life, we need procedural knowledge or else we will not be able to perform many tasks. Procedural knowledge thus is a collection of skills while Propositional knowledge is a collection of facts. Okay. Tasks like cooking, driving, playing a musical instrument and operating a machine involve procedural knowledge. So I hope uh, this personal procedure, jitne many examples diye hain, examples se hi aap ko clarify ho jayega ki kya differences hai. Propositional mein aur procedural mein. Okay, uske baad bhi agar ye padhne ke baad bhi koi doubt hoga, then you can ask me in the comment box. But, I have given examples so that you can easily understand. Okay, now comes to the third point that is the propositional knowledge which is also called as descriptive or declarative knowledge. Propositional knowledge is that knowledge which gives knowledge about different things. Some examples of propositional knowledge are an even number is divisible by two. A puppy is the young one of a dog. In India, citizens above the age of 18 years are eligible to vote. Such statement can be proved true or false. Propositional knowledge in turn may be of four kinds. That is logical, systematic, semantic and empirical. Okay, first comes to the logical knowledge. In this type of knowledge, we examine relationship between the statements and the draw conclusions based on the law of logic. Example, all quadrilaterals have four sides. Okay. All square is a quadrilateral. Hence, all squares has four sides. Okay. Example 2, metals are good conductors of electricity. Mercury is a metal. Hence, mercury is a good conductor of electricity. We use this kind of knowledge in science, grammar and mathematics. This is the logical knowledge. Next is the systematic knowledge. This kind of knowledge results from learning a system of words or symbols and examining how they relate to one another. For example, 2 1 plus 2 3 double 4 is a systematic knowledge because we understand something specific when we use the term 2 1 2, 3 and plus 2. Okay? Matlab, kisi cheez ko kut symbol diya gaya hai, kisi cheez se hum log kut samaj rahe, kut specific understanding ho rahi hai. Usse hum log bolenge systematic knowledge. Next is the semantic knowledge. Knowledge that arises due to the knowledge of meaning of words possessed by a person is called as semantic knowledge. 
For example, if someone says unmarried boys are bachelors, we understand what we say, but at the same time, we do not call a four-year boy as a bachelor. This is because we have a definite understanding of the term marriage and we acknowledge that it does not refer to four years old individual. Thus, semantic knowledge is a practical knowledge. Okay? And the last is the empirical knowledge. Four points, right? This one is the last, that is empirical knowledge. Empirical knowledge comes from our senses. Observation, generation of hypothesis, testing and confirmation or refutation of hypothesis results in empirical knowledge. John Locke, when referring to empirical knowledge, says all ideas come from sensation or reflection. Such knowledge can be tested both logically and through experimentation. It is used to describe and predict phenomena. It is communicated by the qualitative and quantitative descriptions. Empirical hypothesis, that is empirical def definitions, generalizations and the scientific laws. Some examples of empirical knowledge are Newton's laws of motion, Dalton's atomic theory, etc. Implications means a teacher must be familiar with the different types of knowledge. A wise blend of these types will result in effective teaching learning. In order to ensure healthy classroom interaction, a teacher needs to have personal knowledge about the students, their aptitude, entry, behavior, interest and needs. Te a teaching without procedure knowledge is meaningless. One needs to have robust knowledge about the process of learning. To evaluate students effectively, procedure knowledge is important. Procedure knowledge of the use of technology helps to enhance the quality of teaching. Propositional knowledge helps a teacher to deal with the issues and challenges that comes in the way of effective teaching. Effective planning requires logical knowledge and Every teacher is expected to be a practitioner, researcher and here the importance of empirical knowledge cannot be undermined. Analysis of the society around us, identification of problems and formulation of remedies to these problems involve different types of knowledge. Okay. Now comes to the knowledge and skills. Our next topic is knowledge and skills. Knowledge is the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. We need knowledge of various topics in order to perform our daily work effectively. Possessing knowledge does not guarantee that the person can use that knowledge effectively. For example, a person has knowledge about the parts of a CPU of a computer, but it does not mean that he or she can assemble these parts to have a CPU working. A person may be able to explain everything about swimming, the different strokes in swimming, and how to swim efficiently, but may not be proficient in doing so. Skills are the proficiencies developed through a training or experience. Skills are usually something that has been learned. Skills can be developed through the transfer of knowledge. For example, by actually assembling different parts of the CPU, a person with theoretical knowledge becomes proficient at the task. A person who has knowledge about decorating cakes will become skillful at the task only through training or experience. Actual interaction with the learning situation in practice is necessary to imbibe a skill. Knowledge and skill. Knowledge involves theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. Skill involves proficiencies developed through practice. It is the state of awareness about something. It is the ability to do something. It involves knowing that aspect it involves knowing how aspect. 
may not involve actual interaction with the learning situation. Involvement with the learning situation is required to imbibe a skill. Example, Smitha knows the vital aspects of a dance form. She can tell us about the posture, expressions and what, but she cannot perform the dance form. This means that Smitha has knowledge of the theoretical aspect of the dance form. Example, Smitha can perform the dance form incorporating all its, all its necessary elements. She possesses the skill of dancing implications. Knowledge resides at the cognitive level, whereas skill have more to do with the psychomotor level. Knowledge and skills are complementary. Knowledge without skill will render the knowledge to be impractical and having the skill to do something but lacking the inadequate knowledge will mean that the task is done with mediocrity. A teacher with thorough knowledge of the content and pedagogy can teach effectively if he or she possesses the skill of teaching. A parent may know much about parenting but may not be able to actualize the same due to lack of skills. Thus, while knowledge provides the scientific basis need for a task, skills provide the artistic aspect. So this was the knowledge and skill. Now comes to the teaching and training. Teaching refers to imparting knowledge or instructing through experience, example or precept. Training on the other hand, forming through drill or practice. Teaching is mostly theoretically oriented whereas training is practical oriented. Teaching provides new knowledge to the people while training helps the person to learn the tools and techniques to apply the same. Training stresses us on attaining specific skills and abilities in a short period, but teaching emphasizes attaining knowledge, understanding the wisdom over a longer period of time. Training involves intensive knowledge over limited domains, but teaching involves extensive knowledge spread over vast domains. Teaching may relate to the subject area, whereas Training relates to functional area. Training is often considered as a subset of teaching. Teaching brings out the capability to acquire knowledge, whereas training brings out your hidden talent. For example, please listen to the examples carefully and write the examples also in your answer sheet. Sudha's teacher exposes Shrudha to different forms of dance the hand and foot movement involved etc here the teacher is teaching her dance but if shudha works under the teacher practicing her hand and foot work adding finance to her dance she is being trained as a dancer training involves interaction the learner has to be participatory in order to learn through training Teaching, on the other hand, may involve passiveness on part of the learner. The goal of teaching is to enrich the mind while the goal of training is to master some specific skills. Often, teaching and training go hand in hand, for which muscles need to be controlled when singing at a particular pitch. Teaching often comes ahead of training as a strong knowledge base helps to achieve skills more efficiently. Teaching and training. Teaching involves imparting knowledge or instructing through experience, example or percept. Training involves formation through drill and practice. Theoretical in nature, practical in nature. May relate to the subject area with focus on content, on content aspect may relate to function area with focus on skill aspect. This is for the teaching and this is for the training. This is for training. Ke liye, okay? Trainings are practical in nature. It may relate to function area, uh, focus on the skills. This is for the training. This is for training. Ke liye. 
focus on skill aspects involves intensive knowledge over limited domains involves extensive knowledge over vast सी ये दोनों के बीच में डिफ्रेंशिएशन है ठीक है ये जहाँ जहाँ मैं ट्रेनिंग लिख रही हूँ ये हो गया आपका ट्रेनिंग के लिए दिस फॉर द ट्रेनिंग ये हमारा ट्रेनिंग के लिए दिस लाइन इज ऑल्सो फॉर द ट्रेनिंग और ये सारे लाइन्स जो है वो है हमारा टीचिंग के लिए ट्रेनिंग इन्वॉल्व यहाँ ऑलरेडी ट्रेनिंग लिखा गया है ठीक है अ टीचर क्रिएट्स एन अवेयरनेस अवेयरनेस ऑफ द कॉन्सेप्ट एंड प्रोवाइड्स न्यू नॉलेज एंड अ ट्रेनर दिस इज फॉर द ट्रेनिंग ट्रेनर हेल्प इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द प्रैक्टिकल एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस नॉलेज ठीक है सो यर वी हैव सीन द डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन टीचिंग एंड ट्रेनिंग जितने लाइंस अंडरलाइन है वो सारे हमारे ट्रेनिंग के लिए है और जितने लाइंस अंडरलाइन नहीं है वो सारे हमारे टीचिंग के लिए है तो टीचिंग और ट्रेनिंग के बीच में डिफ्रेंशिएट यहाँ है ओके नाउ कम्स टू द नॉलेज एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन क्लियर आई होप इट्स क्लियर दिस वन जितने अंडरलाइन वाले हैं आप ध्यान से एक बार पढ़ लेना ये पढ़ लोगे तो ये आपका अपने आप बन जाएगा इसी के शॉर्ट फॉर्म में मैंने बनाया है बस इसे डिफ्रेंशिएट किया है क्लियर ओके सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ नॉलेज एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन सी हियर द पेपर एट ए दैट इज नॉलेज एंड कैरिकुलम इसके जो यूनिट वन है अंडरस्टैंडिंग द नॉलेज काफ़ी बहुत सारे टॉपिक्स उसने कवरअप किए हैं ठीक है और काफ़ी लेंदी लेंदी टॉपिक्स भी सो so, आज हम अपना वीडियो यहीं कंप्लीट करते हैं ठीक है यहीं ख़त्म करते हैं ये हमारा पार्ट वन हो गया एट ए यूनिट वन का पार्ट वन और पार्ट टू एट ए के पार्ट टू में मैं इसके आगे नॉलेज एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन देन बिलीफ एंड रीजन बिलीफ एंड रीजन एंड नॉलेज एक्विजिशन और जितने भी मेथड्स हैं उसकी ये सारे मैं आपको पार्ट टू में प्रोवाइड कर दूँगी ठीक है आई होप दिस वीडियो इज़ हेल्पफुल फॉर यू इफ दिस वीडियो इज़ हेल्पफुल फॉर यू देन प्लीज लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड प्लीज कमेंट फॉर द पार्ट टू जैसे ही आप कमेंट कीजिएगा मैं जल्द से जल्द ही आपको अपलोड कर दूँगी ठीक है आपके लिए so thank you for watching